Welcome to Kinky Knots Cafe's Proactive is the Way. Proactive is the Way is a podcast brought to you by two sisters who dove into the health and wellness industry. One plan and the other by fate. We have joined forces to bring to you authentic conversations about our personal experiences as it relates to managing our health working within the industry, and taking our combined knowledge to share with you some pearls of wisdom that you can take with you to live the best version of you. Over the next year, we will host two episodes a month, and each month we will focus on a topic that is designed to increase an awareness of tools and resources to enhance an aspect of your mind, body, and spirit. All right, folks, we are wrapping up this month by sharing our Odyssey plans. If you are asking yourself, what are Odyssey plans? Well, at a high level, as the author shares, life is an odyssey, an adventurous journey into the future with hopes and goals, helpers, lovers, and antagonists, unknowns and serendipities, all unfolding over time in a way we both intend at the start and weave together as we go. Odyssey plans are sketches of possibilities that can animate your imagination and help you choose which wayfinding direction you will actually take to start prototyping and living into the next. So if you haven't noticed or you missed it, proactive is the way 2022 to 2023 season was all about diving deeper into the Designing Your Life book by giving you more context around certain ideologies presented and taking more time to better understand ourselves to either learn something new, enhance or self-correct certain behaviors to be the best version of ourselves to be most effective for this moment right now in designing our lives. We learned over this past year about our habits. Why do we do things the way we do? How to eliminate bad habits and create new ones and focus on building good habits by reading Atomic Habits. We talked about how not to backslide into our bad habits by reading The Mountain Is You. We learned about defining our principles. What do we value and are willing to flex or not flex on when managing our lives by reading You Owe You by Eric Thomas. We also learned about flow states and dove into what flow states mean and how to generate more of them to go from good to great in life. We tapped into finding our vocation, developing self-awareness, self-management, relationship management, and improved our thinking process. Then we wrapped up by learning how to leverage an ideation tool that helps to improve your mental performance. A tool, by the way, that I actually used for my most recent exam to acquire my group fitness certification. It was pure genius, right? And I share with you guys that I passed. And this week, I just got to highlight this here. Hang on. (laughs) 
I received it. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Came in. <laughs> so excited. So excited. All right. All right. So it has been quite a year. I don't know about you, but I feel I have truly grown a lot. And the way that we grow really and tr truly is by leveraging the resources that we have provided, doing the work, if you will. All right. So, but if you're just now joining us and you missed any of the helpful series that we have put on for over the past year. Guess guess what, folks? What do you think? We got them all on replay. All right. Uh, you can always go to www.kinkynotscafe.com forward slash proactive is the way to catch up. And if you want to pick up any of the books to read or listen to, please click on our green KK Cafe approved check mark to access all books featured during this season. All right, so a lot, a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff, Tiff, right? So now let's go ahead. We're going to dive. We're going to dive. We're going to get into it. Are you ready, Tiffany? Yep. Ready to talk about your Odyssey plan? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's say that again. Yeah. No, 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 no. I can talk about my Odyssey plan. All right. Good, good. So before we dive into your Odyssey plan, I'm going to talk a little bit about the methodology at a very high level to creating the best version of you for a moment in time. Right. So step one, when we were creating these Odyssey plans, the authors recommended that when we create them, we create at least three life designs or Odyssey plans. And he basically broke it down like this. Number one, focus on the life that you are currently doing. It's a good idea that deserves your attention. Number two, what is the life that you would do if the first one was no longer an option? And then number three, the life you would do if money or image did not play a factor and you could make money doing it. And these plans should be developed over a five-year period. Step two, he said, develop a six-word headline describing the essence of your plan. Step three, formulate or even answer questions that this plan helps to answer. And then the final step, complete the dashboard. The dashboard where you can gauge your resources. You know, do, do you have the time, the money, the skills, the contacts that you need to pull off your plan? Like ability, are you hot or cold or warm about your plan? The confidence, are you feeling full of confidence or pretty certain about pulling this plan off? And then lastly, coherence. Does the plan you make, does it make sense within yourself? And is it consistent with you? your work view, and your life view. Some other possible considerations, he said, make sure you think about your geography. Where would you live? What experience or learning do you hope to gain out of all of this? What are some impacts, results of choosing this particular plan? Uh, he also talked about the role, the industry, if it's a company that you want to see yourself in, you want to think about all these things and keep more things in mind other than just career and money. And of course, if you get stuck in all of this, mind map it. 
All right. So that's at a very high level. I didn't want to dive real deep into it, too deep into it, but just give um, you a quick overview of the Odyssey plans Uh, to learn more. Of course, I prepared the way Uh, I've already offered you a link uh, to a free course that is hosted by the authors of Designing Your Life uh, called Odyssey Planning. Uh, Please check out our last podcast to gain access. All right, Tiffany, I'm ready. I want you to share with us one of your plans. And before you do, let me ask you the question, how many plans were you able to come up with? So I have about three plans. Okay. Um, And do you, did you have any titles for them or can you kind of give us a gist of the three that you came up with? (laughs) You know what? I did not think of a title. Um, Well, what was, what's plan number one? Like, what are you doing right now that is a part of your, or what is plan number one? Well, currently, and I think over the year, I've been talking about how it is my desire, my passion to complete my doctorate, because that would be um, the term, um, you know, the terminal degree of my um, profession. And that's super important to me to realize the highest um, educational potential for what, it is I do for a living. Um, so I really enjoy being a nurse practitioner and providing patients and people and families and other professionals with a health perspective that I have I have cultivated over what has it been fifteen years. Okay. So, um, but, um, so becoming, um, Dr. Tiffany, which, you know, my handle on social media has always been Dr. Tiffany. Yeah. Is, you, you are, you put it into, you put it into existence, right? Just yeah. Like- I, I have, um, I, I've been, I've been Dr. Tiffany, even when I didn't want to be Dr. Tiffany, I was going to be Dr. Tiffany because people have always called me Dr. Tiffany. Um, I always just wanted to be a scholar. I wanted to be a part of that. Just, I I wanted to be a thought leader, actually, you know, uh, because I feel like I got something to say. I feel like I have something to offer and that it could be profound and that it could be life um, changing, like it really resonated with me. And I know, you know, I like to go on tangents. So I'll try not to be tangential right now, but um, it uh, really resonated with me when I was in a, it it was either bookstore, like um, what is that bookstore that's right there on the corner at, uh, in in Dayton, uh, right there in that plaza uh, where the babies R us used to be. Uh, Oh no, Uh -uh. that's Barnes and Nobles, Barnes and Nobles. And I think I bought that journal from out of there, but on the front of it, or I might've bought it from Target, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and it basically said, uh, be the change you wish to see, Mahatma Gandhi. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that really resonated with me. And because, you know, healthcare, it, it kind of chose me, right? Because I was all on these other different paths, you know, when I graduated from uh, undergrad. I was going to go play pro ball in Syria and I had a baby. Then I'm going, oh, I think I'm going to apply to medical school. Oh, then I saw a do- uh, one of the doctors, I went for a physical exam. He's like, you really have a personality, a bedside manner of a nurse. Not that that's, you know, anything bad, blah, 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 but mm-hmm. he gave me good insight. But anyway, so right now what I'm trying to complete is um, um, my doctorate, um, and not trying that I am going to complete is my uh, doctorate and um, in nursing. Okay. That uh, um, when I get tired of doing this, when I get tired of the manual labor, I get tired of the organizational politics and there's organizational politics and everything, Mm -hmm. but uh, it, it, um, it beats you down. So Mm -hmm. I, I need to, have a way out and the academic setting um, 
is attractive to me because I I uh, genuinely love learning. Mm -hmm. Love learning. Consummate learner. <laughs> A consummate learner. Yes. 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 We always do. We all do that way, right? I mean, even till the day we die. And I already talked about that because it's so much out here. And it's so, if you think about it, it is just so, um, it is so fulfilling. It can be fulfilling once you, once you're able to realize um, who you are through learning. You know what I mean? Like, if that makes sense. Absolutely. But and learning comes in all shapes forms, right? Uh, I had a conversation with a guy who I, I think he took the quote that I had posted up um, uh, incorrectly, but I was just basically trying to share that education is key. You know, it's 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 a passport to your future. It does. And when I talk about education, education in every in, in any type of education, formal and informal education, having a conversation with somebody at the coffee shop is educational, right? Com communicating back and forth together with someone on the telephone could be educational, right? So um, he's you like, gotta you gotta make that commitment to put yourself. You gotta be deliberate about putting yourself in learning moments, like yeah. and. And I think that's, that's what formal that's what formal education is too for me. Mm -hmm. It's a deliberate um, because being on the phone and talking in a coffee shop might not be so deliberate, right? It might just be spontaneous. Might, but but you can if you are intentional, if or you're intentional, intentional yes. about your ability to be receptive to different thoughts, different ideas, every instance, every interaction you have with someone will be an educational experience. And I just think about like, even on the, when yesterday, I a prime example, I was talking to a woman on the phone. Uh, I think it was my, oh, woman on the phone. It was my, my, my kid's teacher. We were doing our welcome. And uh -huh like oh my gosh what you just said give me goosebumps and we were just vibing back and forth and I learned something about because she was talking about her family and in this town she's lived for 45 years the girl never left and I was like Zip? you know but she helped me to you can, could you keep your eyes still I was like what <laughs> 45 years could you imagine 45 years in Dayton Ohio Whoa. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I could not. I told her. I said, "So funny." I said, "Every ain't never, ain't never lived on the west side, but look like you did." Oh, <laughs> by the time, girl, please, or the east. Oh, please, Jesus, help me. They will wear you out, boy. Won't it? Um, won't it do it? <laughs> <laughs> wear your ass out. But anyways, um, that's all right, Dayton. I love y'all. <laughs> but yeah, so I, you know, but you have to be receptive to the, the, the educational, um, the, the, ev every moment and try to find, well, what is the learning? What am I supposed to learn in this moment? Right. Uh, I, I think we don't, we're not taught to be critical thinkers, you know? Ooh, oh my God. Do you know how many times I said that this week? Oh, really? Yeah. Toya, I said that this week. I said, you know what? I'm not doing this with y'all this week. Toya, I was so heated. I almost walked out of my clinic this week. Wow. I don't know what kept me in place. <laughs> I honestly was going to leave. I said, this is the way. <laughs> That's those so emotional uh, conversations we had. <laughs> right. Girl, yeah. I started talking to myself. I was just like, you know what? I will leave out of here right now. Not talking to nobody. I was just like, this is this. As is long as you don't answer, you good, girl. You can talk. Well, yeah, I'm dating telling you, I was like, I need a mental health day. I was like, I need multiple mental health days. I was like, I'm getting anxiety. I can't optimize my patient's care. This gives me, girl, I was going there. <laughs> I said, because people are not expected to critically think. Mm -mm. I said the pharmacy keep calling me. I mean, so yeah, just getting all just and you know the the I think the worst thing it is for me is the and, and the best word for it is contrary. Mm -hmm. When people are asking questions, I'm not saying a question is dumb. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying think about the question you asking because you've taken up my time. 
before you ask the question. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of the person's time that you're taking up when you ask the question. Mm -hmm. And make sure it's meaningful. Mm -hmm. Boy, yeah. I, I was gonna leave, and I still, I still feel like I don't want. I, I still feel like because I'm not around critical thinkers. Listen, if you stay around something long enough, that's what you're gonna become. This is so true. I don't like that around me, like at all. Not when I'm doing in my when I'm doing my work and I'm in my mode and I'm in my zone. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be bothered with no foolishness, as Daddy would call it. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to be able to focus and you know be able to create treatment plans that are meaningful treatment plans. You can't do that with a whole bunch of um, chaos around you. It's impossible. Yes. And um, and I just get that. And I feel like as a contractor, because they think they pay me so much, but they're really not. Mm -hmm. Because you don't pay me for my, for my creativity. You're not paying me for my creativity because I'm creating stuff for people as they come there. Uh, yeah, y'all give us templates to use, mm -hmm. but I go outside of my template. I, 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 I'm I, looking at the individual. I truly individualize people's care. Right. I don't get paid for that. Right. You pay me to show up. Right. So anyway, um, so yeah, so working on the doctorate, that's plan one. Once I get this out of the way, I feel like my path will be clear. Now I say all that, but that's kind of like saying, if I won the lottery, I, I my path will be clear. And we know that's a lie, right? Right, right. Well, you you know, but, I, what do they say? When you get to the, when you get to the bottom of one mountain, that just means that you are at, I'm sorry, when you get to the top of one mountain, means you're at the bottom of the next. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay because the top of this mountain is is what I want to achieve. Right. Because I honestly feel that over my lifetime, um, um, you know, you have these naysayers, including yourself, right? Okay. Um, you know, that don't actually, they don't truly believe in what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. nope. they do a lot of lip surface they not they're they're not for real supporting you or cheering you on or rooting for the best version of you which is why you have to do so much for yourself right and say to yourself and things like this keep grooming your own self right that um it's so critical people don't understand self-talk self-love yeah it's very it's very critical to have because when no one else has it for you, you have to be able to hold yourself up. And the other, the flip side of that is if you don't possess it, if you don't have it, you can't expect for people to love you. You can't expect for people to respect you. Right. Um, it's really, it's really important to have that self, to be able to self-talk positively, positive self-talk. And then also self-love. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's um, plan number one. There is no, and and so after number one, always come number two. But in plan number two, he says, if plan number one fails, plan number one can't fail. Never. It's not going to fail. I'm not, I'm not that. going to plan two, if mm -hmm. it, you know, because plan one, I'm not going to plan two in the mindset of plan one failed. So I don't, I don't have no plan to. Right. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to really, I don't have really a plan to, but no, <laughs> the reality is, is that honestly, and, and he talks about that, you know, there is really no failure in any of this because each of these plans are possibilities and each of these plans may lead you into developing something completely different. That's true. So, I agree with that. And so the reality is, and this is, he talks about a designer and the thought process of a designer because they don't ever, when they're designing, just have one thing that they're focusing on. They are literally um, building in parallel, designing different plans, different options in parallel and considering all of them, right? Which is why he wants you to develop at least three. Um, and it's not about failing. It's really about which one is, fits me best at this moment. And I shared that in uh, one of our first or our second episodes that 
I am a firm believer that we can design multiple lives, right? Mm -hmm. We can have multiple versions of ourselves. Um, But it's very important that when we think about those multiple versions, uh, having the capability to focus on um, one of those versions uh, and fully flush it out, right? And from my perspective, and I'll get to talk about mine here, uh, hopefully in a moment, but, uh, or doing them all (laughs) simultaneously. Right. 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 um, Not spreading yourself too thin. Not spreading yourself too thin. And I'll talk about. Because I I, I think, you know, I have an example of someone who spread themselves too thin right now. And now um, just the amount of stress because of the economic situation our whole country is in, Mm -hmm. you know, like the amount of stress that that causes, and then that can disrupt your plan. This is so true. This is so, but that's why, you know, you have to learn. I think a lot of people, when they formulate their plans, um, they try to mimic someone else, or they try to uh, please the Joneses, if you will, or uh, they're not doing it in a way that is aligned with their day to day or who they are as a person. So, and I'll give you an example, like um, I love yoga with Adrian. I I watch her all the time, right? She's actually who inspired my love for yoga. Is she on YouTube? She's on YouTube. She's got a great platform. She's got all these subscribers. She's amazing, right? Um, But I know, I'm not no Adrian. I was like, I'm not doing an Adrian. I'm sorry. I love yoga, but I'm not a yoga with Adrian. And because she does it like every day right? But, and I do yoga every day personally, but I know if I did that for people, that would exhaust me. Honestly, I think I would feel exhausted, (laughs) which is why I created yoga be exhausting when you're doing it recording, right? You, you know, all of that behind the behind the scenes, folks don't see all the editing. Oh God, you know, got to match the music because you got to cut out a piece or or lead the music out. She's very smart. Lead the music out. Um, But anyway, uh, you know, so, but I had to, for my yoga practice and what I wanted to share in terms of teaching, that's why I created the 20 days of summer. I was like, this is all I'm, this is all I can give y'all right now. I can't get y'all no more. Okay. Uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, for 10 weeks in the summer and I'm done, you know, but that's what fits me. And that's what we have to get better at. You don't walk around trying to please the Joneses. Don't walk around trying to do what they do. You have to do what fits and what resonates with you so that you are not burnt out. So you don't become burnt out um, so that you're not overwhelmed. And so you don't come uh, how do I give up? Because that's what will happen when you're not being truth or true to yourself. What happens? You're going to give that up. Right. When you doing something just to be doing it. Oh, that's quit. true. I agree. I right? agree. With that. And that's, that's what true. I see. I see a lot of people. They just doing stuff just to be doing it. There's no heart behind it. It's 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 prestige. It's uh, being noticed. It's, you know, fitting all of those, uh, societal desire, trying to meet those societal desires, (laughs) you know, that you see. And so, um, from my perspective, I, you are right. You have to be very, very careful. Don't do too much. And then what you do, you have to make sure that it is aligned with who you are as a person. Right. So let's let's get going, because I know we want to be mindful of time here. I just wanted to highlight. So for myself, I did come up with three and uh, the titles of mine for plan number one. um, It was called Embracing Motherhood and Enjoying Each Moment. Uh, And we'll share our plans. We'll we'll share uh, our plans um, separately. But I just wanted to make sure that I share that plan. Number two for me was uh, Kinky Knots Cafe. So the title I I picked for that was Revive, Refresh, Repeat, A Dream Reawakened. And then plan number three was Rise My Angels. It is finished. So those are my three plans. The first two I was able to flush out 
uh, very, very well. The last one is probably going to take me some years and we'll see if that one uh, gets to come to fruition. It's actually uh, a plan that I had created back in 2014. Um, it sounded like somebody died on that third one. <laughs> yes. Like, rise my angel. Yep. Rise my rise angel. My um, and it's, it it's not. Finished. I don't like nothing to say person. it is finished. It's not. It's not a uh, rise my angels. It is finished. It is not. Um, it is not death by of a person. It's, <laughs> it's death by. Of of an, an ideology, it's it's death of a system. Um, so I I wanted to I want to flush that one out. That one's going to take some time. So, but um, I won't be sharing that one today. So you shared with us uh, the fact that you're going to get your doctorate and continue on the path of being a nurse practitioner. And then hopefully once all of that is said and done, going into the field of academics, um, which is a great segue, especially when you're getting ready to retire. That's definitely the best. And then also, I love that. I think it's so important that our um, we leverage what we do within our lives to to, to educate others. To yes, help and that's them. what I was going to say. Exactly. Like lead the way and um, leave, leave the way. Yeah. Like, let 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 them, right. Like let them now take over because now it's your time to take over. And, you know, actually that's a philanthropist thought because if you listen to Bill and Melinda Gates, they mm -hmm. say, okay, we have paved the way we've given most of our wealth to this cause. Mm -hmm. We leave here. We're not leaving. We'll we'll do it for another 10 years. That's in the trust or that's in the foundation. And then somebody else needs to pick up yes. because we've not shown you how to do it. Yes. So, yes. so yeah, hopefully I'm able to make, um, prayerfully, I'm able to make that kind of contribution to, um, uh, to this, to this lifetime. Yeah. Um, because that is my true desire. Um, when I look at, and, and most of them are men, but there are other, um, like the one author, because I really follow, um, I realize now thinking about myself, I'm really into social justice. Like, um, I'm really into advancing people that are part of vulnerable populations. I'm learning that about myself, that that's what I desire um, to help because I feel so happy when I'm around that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you're like happy. <laughs> it seems like your situations are very sad, huh? No, but but you giving a piece of yourself is and being able to and then people being receptive to that. That's, that's yeah, yeah. So yeah, and so I feel happier around um, that setting. Mm -hmm. But when I think about um, thought leaders, like their contribution, like Cornell um, West, Michael Eric Dyson, um, and then. I should I should really know her name, Michelle. Uh, she's an Ohio State professor, um, and she wrote uh, schools schools to prison like pipeline. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, how uh, the author uh, how a prison system is in in terms of and how it um, basically oppresses the minority. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um. Uh. Hold on. But anyway, because um, I wanted to give you her, the new Jim Crow, mass incarceration, Michelle mm -hmm. Alexander. She's actually a professor, I believe, at Ohio State University. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But things like that, like that, those those um, topics, those grassroots movements, those social justice mm -hmm. um, initiatives, those excite me. And um, and being able to combine it um, and and, and with healthcare and get people to collaborate and how we can use healthcare to um to eliminate um this disparity that we see because mm -hmm. the average person the average um black male um once they leave prison i think their lifespan um is, is shortened i want to say it, they don't live very many years after um, they've been released, um, having served a, a, a long term. So just trying to improve, you know, their health perspectives and, um, you know, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I go, you yeah, go, yeah. I go on tangents. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but that reminded me of a, a Yale. I don't know. Yeah, did Yale have a somebody I saw on Facebook? I said I'm going to have to research that because I didn't know Yale had a um uh an educational program for prisoners. I said, I'm going to have to take a look at that. You have to go- Google that for me and see if, but I know Sinclair has one, uh, Sinclair Community College here in Dayton. They're very big on that. And they had a big population of uh, individuals uh, who were in prison graduate. And yeah. um, so I love you know, like what you just shared, how folks are taking that knowledge, that information that she presented, and they're doing something about it, you know. Mm -hmm. It's called the University of New Haven joined the Yale Prison Education Initiative, YPEI, enabling incarcerated students to matriculate in two and four year degrees, creating pathways for released students on campus. And so, you know what, because if you notice what happened after, um, and and this was, it was by design, which we say that all the time, but I don't think we really define by design. So basically when we say by design, we're meaning the government set it up um, that way because they're trying to um, create some sort of financial pathway, either for the government or some other big entity. Well, it's becoming a burden. Think about this. Uh, yes, but it's a- not. You make up the dates. Then Toya, those um prisoners are in there working for free. Girl, no, it's for the way harder. Yes. No. When they get out, it's going to be a burden on our social system. Right. Okay. So th- true. Okay. I didn't understand. So you that you'd be dumb not to educate them or assist them with being able to uplift themselves so they would go out and have the desire to work, to have the desire to be contributors to society. You just going to unleash them without prepping them and preparing them how to now interact with others, how to, you know, it, it ha- you have to, because if you don't do that, then they're going, instead of becoming a contribution, a steward, they're going to become a burden. Right. Maybe so that's making you money in the long run. It's not. So to that point, mm-hmm. um, uh, to that point, uh, oh man, I was going to say something and then it just slipped my brain. That's okay. That's okay. Cause I'll continue. Go ahead. You can interrupt me. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. When it comes back to you, but so uh, the plan that I wanted to share, and I'm actually just going to to put the plans. I'm going to make them accessible to you all. You all guys can can take a look at. It. We won't hash uh, through those plans, but you'll get to see uh, my revive, refresh, repeat, a dream reawaken plan. Uh, I'll make sure to uh, provide that to you. But one thing that I wanted to because I really wanted to talk about as you were going through this process, you know, what challenges did you experience when you were designing this version of yourself and how did you overcome these challenges? So the challenges that I have found, um, you know, um, developing my plan is um, one, having a fragmented plan, because um, truthfully, Um, When you're planning things, um, you had mentioned the word succinct, um, being concise, you know, being clear about your plan. Right. I I just knew what I wanted to do and 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 jump right in. I threw myself right in. Right. But I don't necessarily think that I had a plan. I do think that planning is very, very important. So I had a fragmented plan. So that was one of my challenges. My second challenge was, um, you know, um, and it still goes along with planning, um, not being able to separate my personal life from my professional life. They kind of collide. I don't have good balance there. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that I don't have good balance, which Mm -hmm. is probably why most of the time I stay frustrated. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, another another challenge, um, and people are probably like, why they always got to bring up race? But it's 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 been my race. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's in how has your race <laughs> impacted positively or negatively in designing this version of yourself? It's kind of been both. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I still feel limited opportunities. Mm. Um, in spite of how 
intelligent, how creative, how articulate, how motivated, I'm self-motivated, self-starting, you know, enthusiastic. And it's- oh, they it, want to put you in a box, don't they? I mean, just beat me down, honey. I mean, just beat <laughs> me down to the ground. <laughs> What's wrong with all of that? I don't know. No, I don't get it. I'm just like, and, and it can't be, it cannot be any other. I have tried every single thing. I have, you know, attempted to change the way I speak. I mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't even matter. It's not gonna matter. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter. And so that's why I was just like, you know what, just be you. And that's it. Do you because you're damned if you do that. That cliche saying whatever it's called. Well, it's you so know, true. You're damned, you know. <laughs> so it's just important for you to center and just be yourself. Yes. It yeah. Those are, those are the challenges, and um, mm -hmm. and that's not all inclusive. Um, I'm sure <clears throat> I could come up with a lot more. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to tell you about the um, real quick, let me um, go back to it about what I was going to tell you about the um, prison thing. And then I lost it again. Jesus. It, it was right there. Because <laughs> my mind is thinking of a whole bunch of different things. And I was going to tell you something. Yeah, well, about I was going to share and keep thinking about it because it's going to come back again. But what I, I was going to share with you as it related to uh, what you what you just shared um, is that, you know, it is so important that we have to do us. We have to to be us um, in all of that. Uh, the other point that I wanted to share was as you you talked about, you know, some of the challenges around your race. Um, you know, you, you spoke a lot about the, the negative aspects of it, but I'm sure that there were positive aspects, you know, with regards to your race. And I and it just came to me when you were talking, I was like, well, you know what? you probably knew how to connect with the population that you truly want to serve, right? Um, you probably have a very good connection because you are as well a part of that population that um, are um, received disparate treatment or uh, marginalized. Are marginalized within, you know, within the healthcare industry. So that is a, a beautiful that's a beautiful silver lining, if you will. I always, I always look at every situation. I'm like, okay, I'm in a, I'm in a jacked up situation right now. All right, so this is all the bad because we can pick out the bad super. But what out of this can I pick? What out of this situation can I pick that is good, right? Yes, I'm marginalized. Yes, people don't respect me because of my color. Yes, this, they want to put me in a box. They not trying to hear me. They only want to hear what they want to hear, et cetera. What can I get out of this, right? Uh, what is my learning lesson? What is my takeaway? And so I just wanted to make sure you are aware that guess what? Okay, all of that's going on over there, but I guarantee those same folks can't can't uh, contribute to society the way that you are to these people's lives the way that we are designed to contribute in a positive and in a helpful manner. So, um, I just wanted to make sure I, I shared that with you. Um, the other bit. So I'll talk about my challenges, and I already highlighted it early. I'm earlier. I'm overly creative. Overly, you know, my mind goes. I think and, you can be overly creative. You don't think so? But I think I, because I sit here, Tiffany, I literally just be creating shit. I don't think, that's a, I don't think there's a limit or an extreme of creativity. Well, it can, really it, can, it, can, it can exhaust you, right? Especially if you're trying to do it all at once. And that was one of my things is that, you know, I kept trying to find the best one the best version to focus on for right now. And I literally, when I was um, developing Kinky Knots, Kinky Knots Cafe was just supposed to be hair and skin. That was it, right? But look how it's morphed, right? Like I got hair, skin, then I went to personal training. Now I got yoga. Then I said, okay, you know what? I like pro, I, I saw Tiffany with the podcast she, she I, I don't let me help her get that off the ground running you know and so I was like okay let me do that and then next thing I know I was like oh remember when I was 15 and I put myself through sewing school and I was like oh and I remember I made them ugly paisley pants and this pencil this this color <laughs> this color um 
pencil skirt with the most ugly tweed fabric. I didn't know how to choose no fabric. But anyways, but I was just committed to the press. Anyway, so now I'm like, oh, now I can design. I can't sew because I lost the skill set. Don't do that, folks. When you got a skill, develop it. But hopefully over time, I'll get it back. But so I started repurposing clothes. I got some scissors. I said, I can do it. Cut up some stuff, right? I can cut up all day. So I've got some some scissors and now I'm into the whole clothing side. So one of the challenges for me was just really trying to <laughs> focus on one design and, you know, hash that out. But I ended up expanding it and doing them all. I was like, hell, I'm just going to do them all, right? And then within that, so I don't get burnt out, I don't get overwhelmed, finding a way to work finding a way to make it work for me. I know I'm not going to sit two hours to, to, to work on sewing an outfit, but I can cut up something in about 45 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. All right. So I, what, I would say that again. No. Oh, what I was going to tell you was like, that was not, that's why it's not called rehabbing um, corrections no more. Oh, okay. What do they call it now? Corrections. It's called the correctional department. It's no longer called rehab and rehabilitation and corrections. It's oh. no longer called the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections. It's called the Department of Corrections. Because they don't want to rehab or corrections is, it sounds like it's redundant though. Corrections, rehab. No, rehabilitation is totally different than corrections. Corrections has to do with like disciplining Oh, that's how they define it. And when I hear no, that's how I don't I don't hear I don't hear discipline. I hear um we're they ain't trying to they're not trying to correct anybody's behavior. behavior. That's that's what rehabilitation, I rehabilitation. Well, I mean, um like for physical mm -hmm. therapy, do they call physical therapy corrections? No. It's a rehabilitation, right? Because you're actually physically doing something. You're creating a plan. You have a plan behind. But in corrections, no. It's to correct you. It's you you're disciplined. Like mm -hmm. for Yeah, but I think they're taking another they well, they're probably gonna redefine that, hopefully. Cause if you, I wanna see if, if that's another they're, I think they're probably going to redefine that if that is the the definition for it, because the reality is, is that you're not really correcting them. You're allowing them to find the light within themselves to self-correct, because the reality is, is when somebody come to try and correct you, what's the first thing you do? Resist. Yes. <laughs> right? I mean, that's psychology 101. Don't go trying to correct folks. Just go ahead and plant that seed. I tell folks, be a gardener. Go ahead and plant this and then walk away because you, <laughs> you better walk away because they, they be down your throat in a hot second. Like, Damn. you know, and you just be like, oh, yeah, that is not how I wanted you to take that. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, uh, I think they're going to probably try to redefine that. But I'm glad you, you see, as you continue talking, you kind of remember what the heck it was already there. I don't know why it gets stuck on one of them neurons back in the, it went, it go all the way to the back. It just, they just constantly doing this. They just, I do the same thing. One, is, one is coming forward, the other one then push back. It's, it come on a conveyor belt. It's like, it's a, I'll be back. I'm just going in. <laughs> it's all under the belt. Like, <laughs> like, like at, when you at the grocery store, go under the belt, and then it come back. I'm like, what in the holy hell is that? Good analogy. That is so. It's on a conveyor belt. It'll be yeah, it is. and then it just comes right back. And I'm just like, what? I do that when I'm talking to patients. I start talking so fast, trying to get through a. a, a the business supposed to be long. I'm supposed to have thirty to forty minutes with the patient. They put them in a a, a ten to twenty minute slot. Then I'm then I'm rapid firing uh treatment plans and stuff and people looking at me like what did you say again did you say that I'm supposed to exercise thirty to forty five minutes or did you say twenty minutes what did the American Health Association say as well as the Diabetic Association I'm like you know what I don't have time for all of this I really don't I don't but anyway. <laughs> Funny. That is too, too funny. Okay. Okay. Let's get back on track. My, my, my next question for you was, um, <laughs> what recommendations do you have to improve one's experience in developing their Odyssey plans? Um, 
the the main you know what because i think we give up too easy i think commitment mm -hmm. but people were like well how do i how do i um stay committed you gotta stay focused just stay committed um I use what I tell what I tell um, my obese patients, right? When they're like, "I need to lose weight," mm -hmm. or "I want to lose weight," etc. Right? Mm -hmm. I say, just stay committed, even if you only work out two minutes a day. You are eventually going to have that desire, and each day you gonna add time, or it's gonna get easier for you. A tipping point. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to find you're going to be like, I'm doing this every day because I like the way I feel even after the two minutes, yeah. two minutes, give it all you got. That's right. what I tell them. I said, because you know what? After you get off of there, you don't stop burning. You mm -hmm. still burning. For Your sure. body is still using energy. For sure. You know, um, so just real big for me is commitment. Okay. Yeah. For me, I, I said, get started. Just, you may not have everything laid out. No, not even know almost where to get started. But just get started. Start asking questions. Start you know connecting with people. If you don't researching, right. oh, connecting with people mm -hmm. and commitment and connecting. Con because see, I don't do that, and I think I would be a lot further along because I don't. I haven't really. I haven't really. That's what to became comfortable with connecting with people okay. because I, I, I lack trust. Mm -hmm. mm, guess what? I don't, I don't trust people. Our last, our last month. Get ready. Get ready for that. Okay. Cause we've got to hook you up. We got to hook you up with how to build those connections much more effectively. Hook right? me up. I'm about to hook you, hook, hook you up and myself up. <laughs> Everybody. No fishing rod. <laughs> Throw it. Throw the fishing line in. <laughs> get over here i got something to say to you we're gonna be friends no let me stop all right i don't even know how to walk it and you know what people be like you don't know and look how you talk you all blah 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 whatever and i'm like but i can't just walk up to somebody and be like, hey, how you doing? i try but then it just don't seem like me. It don't seem genuine. But you got to sometimes it, you do have awkward moments. And I think we have to get OK with object with silence and with awkwardness because you you're just trying to build. You're trying to feel. And folks don't realize that when we are also speaking, we're leveraging um, some of our uh, the neurological component of our brain where our brain is taking the time to process and not everybody processes in the same way. I'll give an example because I just had it yesterday when I talked to um to to uh Mohammed's teacher, you know, I didn't necessarily connect initially on and we had some silent moments, but I allowed that silence um, so that we can kind of build our our thoughts. And then it just started flowing and it, and, and it will happen. And you, but you have to allow for those awkward moments. They're normal. It's normal when you're trying to get to know someone. Uh, I think about when I first met Michelle, uh, Michelle was really outgoing. Michelle, my girlfriend from um, uh, Chicago. Oh, in the, Chicago. Yeah, from Chicago. But she uh, when I first met her, she came up to me out of the blue. I mean, just out of the blue. And it was awkward for me because I was just like. You know what I mean? And she just was like, you know, trying to vibe with me, et cetera. And I felt awkward, but I allowed that awkwardness to occur. And then we ended up being very, very good friends. Right. Uh, and that's how a lot of my relationships. Ben, does she, is she married or have children? Now? So funny. I dreamed about her last night that she was married and she was telling me how awesome her husband was, but no, she's, I don't think so. I think she's dating. She probably, she, I'm guaranteed after this, I'm going to hear that she was engaged. She's engaged or something. Cause I just had a dream about the fact that she was married last night weird. All right. But anyways, okay. So recommendations. Um, so I said, just get started. Don't overthink it. Leverage the resources that we've provided. Uh, make sure that when you get started in developing your Odyssey plans, I strongly recommend that you do it in the morning, if possible, when your mind is fresh, less distractions, um, whatever you're doing, always keep a notebook. 
keep a post-it, keep something around you, especially. Girl, I got them everywhere. I got in trouble at work for having them. Did you? <laughs> I remember when I got severed. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, please throw away your post-it notes. Some of those information have patient information on. I said, no, but they don't. They don't. And it's coded. I be coding stuff. I write stuff just to remember. But it imprints it. So me writing imprints it on my brain. Really helps you so that's the main reason why I'm still writing, why everybody else still typing and stuff. I like to learn that way. Well, that I, we talked about that already, that hand to brain connection. Um, the um, other bit that I was sharing. Yeah. So keep a notepad, keep a pen, pencil uh, close to you, uh, especially when you're going on walks or you're exercising, keep something around you that allows you when you are doing something to jot down those thoughts. And then lastly, if you find that you're stuck, uh, mind map, and we've already provided you tools for mind mapping, right? Un unstuck yourself, if I can say that. So, all right, Tiff. So this is the last question. Designers, they are truly gifted, truly gifted and not prematurely committing to one path. And they tend to stay more open and able to receive and conceive more novel innovations. Do you believe this entire process helped you to become a better designer? And if so, in what ways have you seen your life enhanced or grown? Or have you grown? Um, I am a lot less charged um, and amped up about, um, as I communicated, I told you, you know, I, I feel like my purpose and my focus should be more um, social justice and integrating that um, as a healthcare and in, in, as a healthcare professional, integrating that into my uh, my treatment plan to get people to improve their you know health. Um, so I think that um, for me, I'm a lot less um, amped. I'm a lot less charged um, by the experience of developing. Um, a plan for my life because when you when you're planning you have to be focused you have to be in the right mindset to receive all the different things that come um, at you so you have to um, one be less emotional right mm -hmm. you can still um, possess your passion you can still possess your passion but it's really um, important in order to realize those things realize your plan mm -hmm um that you're you're not so emotional because I, I think I have um really and it and actually worked for me all this time me being emotional mm -hmm. because I think I moved people out the way because they were scared because mm -hmm. I was so emotional you know that's what I mean Tip -tom. So that's probably <laughs> yeah. so that's probably <laughs> Girl, having folks tiptoe on, on like we walking on eggshells. More success. It's kind of like Trump, but I don't want to be that way because I, I don't want people to fear me. I want you to work with me. I want to collaborate. Like I want to be the best, best version of myself by what you have to give me too. You know what I mean? Very true. Very, uh, very true. Very, very true. Um. Uh, well, I'll tell you this, uh, this process definitely helped me to grow and um, this whole experience over the course of the year uh, really inspired me. Um, and as I was going through this process, one of the things that uh, I said is that it, it, it continued to help me in a sense of um, flowing. <laughs> and I said this before, and I, I hear it, you know, all the time um, within my ear flow like water, my friend. And in my life, I found that I've become even more fluid. And even when these unseen, if you will, forces attempt to defer my dreams, I have the capability to move through it 
and understand that I will pre prevail on the other side. And in designing my life, it has taught me that when you allow yourself to be more fluid and work through it versus going around it, while you may be delayed, you will never be denied. And in addition, if you keep your mind open as you go through the process, you will see the good in every life situation. And if you handle yourself well, developing the right character and social and emotional tools, you'll be able to manage through any type of situation. Right. So definitely this is this has truly helped me to be a more effective designer, you know. Um, any last words? No, I think this session was, uh, um, it was fun. Uh-huh. And I think it's going to be in time. I think you should use mommy's uh, little uh, interruption there as a sound bite. Um, no, seriously, because she came in and was like, um, I need to talk to you when you get here. So that could be about a journey. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, even an interruption from your mom. <laughs> and mom just like, rah, rah. <laughs> girl, you're about to be there for two whole nother weeks. Oh my goodness, girl. I said, I call you, honey. Oh my goodness. But um, all right, all right. So no last words. Any last words? No, I just want uh, people, you know, I, I am really excited that we did this together, um, you know, over a year's time and we expected nothing. No, there was no expectation. It was just honestly to be able to, um, you know, socialize with one another because we don't get that all the time. And then, um, you know, like be able just to, you know. Add something to our, or add something to our resume, or add something to our, our lives. lives. Yeah, our lives. Yeah. Like I, I, I did number one because I wanted to help you. That was the number one reason why I started. Because I was like, she wanted to do a podcast. I didn't think about a podcast. I was never thinking about a podcast. That never came up. And then I was like, I was reading that book, Designing Your Life, and I was like. We should, this was what we should do our podcast on. Um, because I was trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to do, right? And so I think that I think that's another reason why it was so, so successful is because our our we didn't have no expectation. We just came, number one, I wanted to help you. I was like, hey, let's do a podcast together. Number two, um, I saw an opportunity to help myself. And if I could in helping myself help others. This is a win-win situation, right? So, um, yeah, but, and I think that's why it lasted too. You know, most podcasts, they die after one, two, five episodes at most. Look at these podcasts that are out here. You got a bazillion of them. They got like three episodes and they're done. Well, they should have been listening to us. They probably trying to do too much <laughs> all at once. Yeah. And that was another thing because we couldn't. You was at, you're in doctoral school. I work full time and I'm, you know, doing virtual schooling with the kids. So I didn't want it to be overwhelming, which is why I tailored it in the way that I did. And even now I've kind of built the model. This is going to be the model going forward so that we don't overwhelm ourselves. You know, should we uh, continue this journey? But um, some last words, and these last words actually came from the author uh, that I wanted to make sure that I shared with everyone. Yes, there are multiple lives in which we can plan, right? And we all have the ability to choose which one to do. And it's not that you only have to do one. You can do all of them if you so desire. But I will tell you this, that the, if you're asking yourself, if you're asking yourself or telling yourself, I, I don't want to do this incorrectly, don't. 
Because in all of this, as Tiffany, you had shared, there is no wrong way, right? Um, there is no failure at this. Uh, the only wrong way or the only failure in all of it is to not do it. That's true. Yes. All right, folks, that is a wrap. And before we head out, we are lovers of music. And guess what, folks? What, what, what? Not only does Tiffany, Tiffany has a song choice. I have a song choice as well. So you guys get double this week. The only time ever in our 11, uh, what is this? 11 month series we have going on. Okay, Tiff, tell us your 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 song choice. So I want y'all to go out there and listen to Gone by um Kanye. Oops, I'm up here starting it. Can you hear it then? You still don't, couldn't hear it. You can't put it on. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Um, But I just want you guys to go out there and listen to um Gone by Kanye. Um, so basically I chose that song because he's rapping about his journey in the music industry um, and the changes he's undergone and un underwent since he um, had gained fame. Mm -hmm. um, and then the lyrics also touch on the challenges and the pressures that he faced. Um, and this draws parallels to what we were talking about today, um, to the idea of an artist. I like that. That one is actually very, very, very good. I, I didn't pick that one up, but um, <laughs> picked it up either by the title, right? Gone, gone, what? What gone? You know what I mean? <laughs> I would not have picked all of that up by the title alone. But, you should um, listen to it though, or at least read the lyrics. I They're good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the lyrics because I, I, I was like, I never even heard that. But I told you, I, the only time I've ever listened to Kanye is when he's gone mainstream. And I don't think that song went mainstream. Um, no, yes, it did because it had it, consequence and um, uh huh, okay, and, uh, it featured two people, yeah, okay, okay. Well, my choice was Bon Jovi. Which one do you think? It's my oh, life, I, <laughs> Bon Jovi. It's my life, it's my life. You never heard of it. Are you singing it? No, I say oh. no, no, no. <laughs> I don't remember that. No, it says, um, this ain't a song for the broken hearted. No silent prayer for faith departed. And I ain't gonna be just a face in the crowd. You're gonna hear my voice when I shout it out loud. It's my life. It's now or never, but I, I don't remember that song. Ever. You haven't heard it? I don't remember it. Oh. I, I feel like I've heard it because you, you know, you're, you, like you've, heard, you've heard it before, but yeah, he just says, it's my life. I just want to live while I'm alive. It's my life. My heart is like an open highway. Like Frankie said, I did it my way. I just want to live while I'm alive. It's my life. Uh, yeah, this is for the ones who stood their ground, for Tommy and Gina, who never backed down. All right. Very good. All right, folks. Well, join Tiffany and I in two weeks as we wrap the season with building a guiding team to help us in designing our lives. If you have ever found it difficult to network and engage the right people to build your tribe, you don't want to miss this episode. More details are forthcoming. So if you have any questions, want to learn more about the speakers or to access all replays, please visit www.kinkynotscafe.com. Proactive is the way, my friends. Take good care. Thanks. Mm -hmm.